Hello, world. Welcome back to Golf Subpar. Colt Nost and Drew Stoltz. Obviously, we are not in the same place right now. I'm, so I'm actually at Sage Valley, getting picked up in 30 minutes, heading to the Augusta National Golf Club. A little place called Augusta. No bigs. Uh, big day for you today. Big day. Um, something every golfer in the world wants to do at some point in their careers. What I need to know is, A, how are we feeling? B, I'm going to need an over-under situation here that I can that I can wager on. You know, I think if FanDuel was placing odds, you know, we said 74 and a half, you know, mm -hmm. when I found out about this, I think. It's a little chilly here. The night was rather long. I'm here at the Kevin Kisner Foundation event at Sage Valley, and we got amongst it last night. I'll be honest. You know, I was talking to a lot of people. They're like, dude, you should just, like, go to bed early, maybe fake drink a little bit. Well, that's just not in the DNA. It's not going to happen. You know, we had Cole Swindell here. We had Dallas Davidson, who's an incredible songwriter. He's written 28 number one hits in country music, among a few others. There was a, basically, there was a concert, and then there was an encore at our cabin last night. We, we mm. came back, and there was about five of us in the cabin. All of a sudden, there was 50. And guitars were being strung. Booze were flowing. It was unbelievable. We had so much fun. I think everybody's hurting a little bit this morning. But we are, uh, we're, we're, we're on the tee at 11 a.m. at Augusta National. I'm hearing pre former President Barack Obama is on the is on the ground today. So there we uh, go. It, it's gonna be, be good. It's gonna be a day. It's gonna fire, be a day. Try to fire a couple into the woods and go hunt for your balls and see if you get sniped by a Secret Service guy. That'd be good. Well, then what are you gonna do? Then you, you just gonna run a solo podcast. That'd be tough, but you know it'd be a hell of a way to go down at Augusta if you're gonna go. That's, That's true. gonna be a big name on property there. Take a little bit of the shine off. So what? What? I need a final final though on this over under because I would like to. I would like to have a wager. Um, and the drinking, the adrenaline is going to kick as soon as you turn down Magnolia Lane. It's going to start firing. You're going to feel fine. Maybe you have a little hair of the dog once you get on property there. And you know when you put that peg in the first tee, dude, it's all it's all uh, forgotten at that point. So what are we going with for the digit? So I met our I met our member last night, Rob Johnston, great guy. Um, he said you're more than welcome to play all the way back. So I'm going to go back there and I'm going to tip it out. You I'll be it. honest with the conditions. And my game just isn't that tight. I haven't played much. I'm going to go 76. 76. That's right in the mix. That's right in the old mixer route. You're going tippy tips all the way back, tournament tees, regular golf, ball hits the hole, correct? Yeah, of course. 76. All right, well, which way are you betting on yourself? Uh, you can't oh, bet over on over. yourself. <laughs> you I'm can't bet over, over on yourself. Uh, uh, you I'm going to give it all I got, please. Yeah, dude, just give got. it give it the old uh, college try. You know what I mean? That's all you can do. And at the end of the day, if you play great, the scorecard goes up in the office. If you play like shit, you just say, I played Augusta. Don't worry about it. That's true. But, man, that's, what a, what it a week it's been. Please, I had, I had my SMU Hall of Fame induction on Friday, which was so cool. Incredible, incredible um, party they put on there Friday night. And now I'm here in Sage Valley getting ready to head over to Augusta. I know you had a time this weekend. I did have well, member, a time. member at Whisper Rock. I did. I'm going to tell you about it in a second. How'd the speech go? Did you go full Jordan, scorched earth, screw every coach that ever wronged me on the way up? That's the way no. to go, in my, I find. I, I did not. Um, mm. You know, they put there was four of us that got inducted. They put me first. I was like, guys, it's all going to go downhill after this. What are you doing? Opening act. I'm not an opening yeah. act, bro. What are you doing? You don't put Chappelle out first. Exactly. But um, it, it went very well. Little emotional. Talking about my mom and Randy, but not too bad. I held mm. together pretty good. You know, from everyone in the audience, they loved they said I won speech of the night, which wasn't really hard to do if I'm being if I'm being totally fair. But Ooh, I hope they're not listening. Good. Yeah. Well, that's okay. They just need to work on their public speaking a little bit. You know, one of us gets paid to speak, the others don't. It's fine. I don't Tough expect break. It to be great. They're in the hall. They're not there, they're not paid to speak. All right. Uh well, good to hear you. They got through it without being super emotional. Um and oh, and one last thing also. Yes, we've talked about. I played Royal Oaks on Friday the morning of. Scotty Shefflett recently shot 58. The course record for him is still intact. It was not you, threatened. You did not clip the 5-8? <laughs> it, it was not threatened. You know, just I know they got some good players down there. That one might stand for yeah. uh, a number of years until he breaks it again. There might be one guy that can break it, and he's already got it. So it doesn't yes, really matter if correct. he changes that. Tell up. me about yeah. this member member. How did we do it? Member did, member did happened, represent? but the member member took place. And uh, mm -hmm. like you, I'm, I'm a little groggy here. I'm, it's, you know, 24 hours is not enough to recoup. But there's good news, bad news uh, on the weekend, I would say. Good news is we finished second. We got runner up, which wasn't great. We didn't, my partner and I, Benjamin Hayes, former USC icon, I would say, still a great player. 
We went out there. We gave it all we had. We played decent, not great, I would say. Left some uh, out there. Uh, good news is the team that beat us forgot to sign up for the money game portion because they did, actually didn't know what flight they were going to play, and I'll get to that in a second. So they forgot to sign up. So we got second, but we got first place money. That's the good news, okay? Okay. Bad news That's is we got, our, we got our heads absolutely bashed in by team Bryce Mulder, former guest here on the show, and his partner, one George Getz, who, if you know Georgie, he is the man. He's also the highest handicap in the flight. He's also probably, I'm guessing, 15 years older than anyone else in the flight. He's probably, I don't know, a low handicap. He's probably, what, four or five, somewhere in there? Yep. Good player. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's mostly plus handicaps in this flight. They, we played with him the first day, dude. They went on a run. I mean, they looked like Xander and Cantlay at the Ryder Cup. I was just, <laughs> nothing could stop them. All right, so it's scramble, scramble, alternate shot on the way in. Of course, I mean, Bryce hit it better than I've ever seen him hit it while he was still playing golf, while he was winning on tour. It was a joke. He's about 20 yards longer, and he hit it really well. And, of course, Bryce was very classy about the entire thing, did not remind us every <laughs> single hole that we were getting our asses kicked, so that was nice. But So Bryce hit it great. George made every single 15-footer and in that he looked at they looked like Cantlay and Xander at the Ryder Cup they were an unstoppable force and on the rare occasion where George would hit a good one in there and Bryce got to putt of course he made everything so they won day one they won day two they end up winning the, the tournament by 12 points I believe we got Ooh. it was a landslide landslide they weren't even the reason they didn't sign up for the money is they were contemplating playing in the next flight up, down the second flight not the championship because of George and the tee boxes they got to play all the way back we're on the fill tees. The thing was stretched out. You know, right now there's zero roll out there. It's a long golf course this week, and they put an absolute beating on us. But that was only the preface to the event. The main event came the night after the first night. Colt, we got a game of between the sheets going. You know Ooh. when that many idiots gets in the room. It's about twice a year, two to three times a year, I'd say a big game of between the sheets breaks out. I was dealing, I think the biggest the table got to was maybe 13 guys. And suffice it to say, there was some shenanigans. Our boy, Brian Waters, who I know is listening right now from San Francisco. Pout, pout. Shockingly, yeah, shockingly, pout, pout, spilled an entire bottle of wine on, on the whole table. Uh, pants, shorts were ruined. The money that was sitting on the table looked like it was came from El Chapo's shootout. I mean, it was like soaking red. People started talking about, do we even is this money even spendable if I use this? And someone's going to think it's blood money. Uh, so that game broke out and there was one really bad situation where the pot got fairly large. There was a King two dealt. And basically for those that don't know, hmm. you're just trying to bet whether the next card flip falls between a King and a two. Sure enough. I had four decks out there, Colt. So shenanigans were happening. King pops up, double the pot. It got extremely loud. Ouch. Things were broken and, uh, it was a complete debacle, but it was incredible per usual. We gave it all we had transfusions were drank. Uh, some good shots were had, but uh, we had good crew both two days, and we came up runner-up, you know, just short. So good hey, for Bryce to get back in the winner circle. I think it's been since Napa that he won something, so shout-out to you, Bryce. All right, I love it, I love it. Well, Sleeves, we got to give a couple of congratulations out there. One, Jason Kokrak picks up his third PJ Tour win, former guest of Golf Sub Par, and there is a new golden child on planet Earth. Jordan and Annie Spieth just had their baby boy, Sammy Spieth. So welcome to the world, Sammy Spieth. Sammy. I'm sorry about the cards you drew. Sammy, uh, the bar is quite high, so it's going to be <laughs> tough living up to that. But I could I could almost feel when I, when Sammy came into the world. I felt like a different aura in, on the globe. I was like, this must be a new golden child. It was just great. Oh, I love it. I can't wait to meet little Sammy. But please, right now it's time to get to our interview this week, and this is a fun one. This guy just recently won on the PGA Tour down in Bermuda. He's a huge fan of golf subpar. Lucas Herbert joined us. Neither of us really knew him that well. And, man, we had a time. Dude, I had only heard his interviews after he won down in Bermuda. And I remember telling you, I think, that day on radio the next day, I was like, I like this guy. This guy seems to get it. And then all of a sudden, bam, pops up, going to come on subpar. And uh, he lived up to the billing. This is one of my new faves. It is awesome. Let's get right to it. Here's Lucas Herbert on golf subpar. Okay, ladies and gents, this is going to be a fun one today. We got the newest first-time winner on the PJ Tour with us. He adds the Bermuda Championship to his two wins on the European Tour. Currently the 44th best golfer on planet Earth, the pride of Bendigo, Australia, Lucas Herbert. What's going on, Lucas? Boys, thanks for having me on. Oh, thank Pleasure. you. I know what you're laughing at. You're laughing at his ridiculous Australian accent, aren't you? That might 
that might have been one of the worst ones I've heard <laughs> this week. But you yes. give me a I chance. Pre- I appreciate Lucas. the attempt. Let me rectify that a little later in the show. Give me another run at it. I'll show you what I got. You're, the the town's hard to pronounce, so that was already. I was my back was against the wall. I don't think you guys have had an Australian guest on yet, have you? We had Elk, right? We had Steve Elkington. Yeah, we've yeah. had Elk. Oh, you had Elk. Elk's not really Australian. I was going to say, y'all call him American now. So. American, yeah. I was looking uh, at the list board got? to see if we had any you others. Might be, yeah, you might be number two. You're we're our first our current Australian. Yeah. Which is a shame. So, Steve, you just haven't had enough practice. That's all. Which is a shame. Yeah, I know. I got to tighten up a bit. Which is a shame, though, because Australians, in my experience, bar none, the best nationality. All the dudes I know from Australia used to play with, like, they all are the best. They like to send it. Yeah, we, we chatted just before we came on. You you sound like you had a pretty good time with uh, with Steve Dartnell, uh, Andrew Dote. Uh, who else did you throw up back there? Jamie Arnold was a um, legend. Nitties. Jamie Arnold, Nitties. yeah. Yeah, you sound like you had a good time with those boys. And I, I, know them, I know them well enough to know that that would have been a good time. Yes. Well, the timing of this podcast is fantastic, actually, because obviously you just won on the PJ Tour. But also... The European tour just got rebranded as the DP World Tour. For us over here, what does that exactly mean? You're the one who plays over there more more than we do, obviously. I play only a little bit. <laughs> um, I think the, the main purpose of the rebranding was just because they played more events outside of Europe than they did in Europe. So it was sort of not really the European mm-hmm. tour anymore. Um, uh, so I think that kind of makes sense. And then, yeah, obviously, it just looks like the tour is in a pretty good shape. Um I don't, I don't know enough about a lot of the logistics that go on. I, I don't get too involved with who's in, who's involved and who's invested and, and, um, and who owns who now, but it, it looks like I think the PGA tour is doing a good job to kind of help get that European tour um, pretty strong again. And, and given those guys out there are a very good chance to have some good playing opportunities um, going forward as well. Yeah. There's going to be over 200 million in prize money between obviously on the European tour with including the WGCs, and the majors, I know you just won on the PGA Tour. Will you still be splitting time going back and forth? Or are you going to focus solely on the PGA Tour? Uh, I want to go back, go back and play a little bit. Um, there's some really good events over there, and th- there's just some like the culture over there is is quite different. I, I mean, everyone, I, I think everyone that comes over from Europe to play in America gets, I want to say like a little bit disappointed because the culture just doesn't change too much between cities in america when you compare like you travel from spain to france to london to czech republic to all these different places and it's so different the food's so different people are so different um it's it's really cool to kind of see it so i definitely want to go back and play some of the bigger events that they they play over on that tour obviously i want to try and defend the irish open if it um works out in the schedule so yeah, I want to try and split the two as much as I can. And obviously being in a winner's category as well, it, it helps. It's, there's not sort of that added pressure that I have to play every event that um, I get into to, to keep my card. Yeah, you get to pick and choose now. And I know you haven't played all the venues on the PGA Tour yet, but have you gotten a sense from what you have played of whether or not like you think American golf, the style of golf courses, suits your games better versus Europe or vice versa? Uh, it's a little bit 50-50. I mean, I don't think... I'm quite straight enough with driver as yet. I've got a fair bit of length there, um, but I just don't, ha- I seem to be able to hit one off the grid um, at the wrong time, which you just can't really get away with in America. Uh, so I-, I would just want to tighten that up a lot. That I think I have kind of a few of the basics that are really good um, for American golf, but it's a lot of tightening up that I need to do, which is um, part of the fun. Uh, and I mean, I can take a little bit of experience from Europe as well. We obviously play in the wind quite a lot. And then, you know, you get to Bermuda and it starts blowing an absolute hurricane on Sunday. And I'm like, this is perfect. Can this, uh, can this keep up all day, please? Yeah, no doubt about it. You get that first win. But I want to go back to the earlier days. I mean, you're only 25 years old, but I want to know about a young Lucas Herbert. What was he like? <laughs> he still is young. I don't think he had many friends or many people liked him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was... Uh... I was like, I was a pretty competitive kid and um, I, I think most people would say pretty arrogant as well. So I, I feel like I probably have the results now to back it up, but I definitely didn't have the results then to be able to back it up. So I definitely rubbed people up the wrong way um, as a junior coming through. But yeah, we, I mean, grew up in, I grew up in Bendigo or Bendigo, I think. Bendigo is the way it's it pronounced. Before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. That's all right. I uh, yeah, I forgot that. I forgot about that one. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll get some lessons yeah, off you later. But yeah, I grew up there. Played 
played a bunch in Melbourne uh, and then obviously around the country as an amateur, uh, which was a lot of fun. Played with um, some really good players, played a bunch with Cameron, uh, Cameron Smith and we were juniors uh, and amateurs. Um, and just a lot of other good players that actually kind of never really made it, um, at whether it be European Tour or PGA Tour or just haven't made it yet. Um, we had we had a really good sort of crop of, of amateurs and juniors coming through it at my age level. And I, I mean, I'm sure we'll probably see a few more of them come out in, in years to come. Yeah, people are over in the States are just getting to know you now. You just went over here. You're going to be playing, you know, a, a big portion of your schedule over here. But you turned pro at such a, a young age. When you were coming up out of junior golf, did you have any thoughts of wanting to go to college in the States or in Australia go to school? Or was it always the plan to turn pro early? Uh, yeah, I definitely had a lot of good offers. And I liked the idea of college until you put the idea of actually having to study in there as well. Uh I think college would have been fun for about three months, but then I would have been kicked out. So it probably worked out for the best that I didn't do it. Uh, but I, it's probably one thing that I like. I wish I had of experience because it's pretty cool sort of system over here um, playing college golf, and it just would have it would have been a lot of fun. But uh, probably the best thing for my career that I didn't play college golf in the end. What were some of the schools that reached out to you? Uh I want to say I had Texas Tech were actually pretty wow. strong. They they wanted um, they wanted a piece of me, and <laughs> from talking to people now, I think it's a dry t- I think it's a dry city. So it's, that's also another good reason. They, they find go. a way. Trust yes, me. they do they find, find a way. Find a way and love it. <laughs> uh, well, I think like UCLA, University of Houston. Um, I like I played the Callaway Junior Worlds, and there was just there was scouts everywhere. Uh, and I wasn't really, I never really approached anyone. And I think with the rules, like they weren't allowed to approach me. So a lot of stuff I heard about after the fact that like, oh yeah, these guys were interested, but no one ever reached out or no one, no one ever seemed really interested. So I never heard anything, but um, yeah, there was, there was a few cool schools that uh, it would have been, yeah, it would have been really fun to go to a few of them. You Texas know, Tech would have been perfect, dude. It's windy as shit. You can drink all the time and they don't really care if you go to class. <laughs> you'd have made a perfect red raider dude you know you you mentioned you were you were kind of cocky as a young young kid growing up i actually was in dubai recently and i ran into one of the tailor-made reps from the european tour named mark i have no idea what his last name is but we were actually talking about you this is before i signed up before you um, agreed to come on here and we were talking about how he was out recruiting ryan ruffles and he met you as well and you go, you know what, Mark? I'm pretty fucking good at this game too. <laughs> when he was out there, <laughs> yes, I, love I was that. like, I love this Give guy. Give me some money, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Is that true? Is that true? Uh, I don't. I mean, I don't remember saying that word for word. That's uh, that's probably even past my level of cockiness. But I know <laughs> I was definitely frustrated because I was playing. I was actually playing some tail made equipment at the time, and it was at the. It was at like the Amateur Championship at Carnoustie. And Ryan, Ryan was on a Nike contract. Like, he was never going anywhere from that Nike contract. And here they are trying to sign him up to a full set of clubs. I'm like, guys, like, I'm playing you Woods. Does anyone even care about what's <laughs> going on in my golf bag? Nope. Not an interest. All in this 15-year-old kid who's just an absolute wonder child. Like, all right. So, and uh, I want to say my coach at the time might have said something to him. Like, hey, you might want to take a look at this guy. And I never showed any interest. That's incredible. <laughs> I love that. Maybe not verbatim, but pretty much that was yeah. the, the gist. Of the, the way story. I said it makes it even better. Yeah, I would just go with that. That's a better story that way. <laughs> I'll, I'll claim it. Hey, you know, I'll, I'll claim it, Colt. <laughs> uh, I read a quote from you. Speaking on that, I read a quote from you. It was from a couple years back where you said when you were 18 or 19, you didn't really have to work that hard, but you were still able to get results. So, A, that sounds like the ideal scenario to me. Not work hard, still be good. But, B, like, what are you doing differently now that you're 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 on the PJ Tour, you're winning, so clearly you've changed something in terms of, like, the work ethic? Yeah, I've, I had this, I've had this conversation a couple of times recently with guys, and it's interesting. Like, I, I, thought, I felt like, I mean, let's say, I, like, I started junior golf, like, playing tournaments and whatnot when I was maybe 10 or 11. And you're in like the under 14 category and you're getting smashed because there's, there's 13 year old kids there and they can hit it 50 yards past where you can when you're 10 years old. So like, you know, you're just not that good, but then you come back the next year and like, yeah, you get a little bit better and you get a little bit stronger so you can hit it further. But then all those 13 year olds are too old. So they kind of fall out the back of that category. And then the same thing happens. And all of a sudden you become like one of the best under 14 players in the country, just because you got older, like you might've got a little bit better, but mainly because you got older. The same thing kind of happens with under 16s and then under 18s. And then you get into amateur golf and 
the same thing kind of happens in like you get a little bit older, you get some more experience. You do get better, don't get me wrong, but like all the guys that are any good also turn pro. So you kind of get to like being a very good amateur, um, you know, whether it be world ranking or, or nation ranking, um, just by like everyone else kind of falling out. And then you turn pro and here's everyone that's just fallen out um, and helped you be a good amateur. All of a sudden now you're playing against all them and no one's going anywhere. You know, you might get like one or two guys at the end of the year fall off the back of the tour because they just can't hit it long enough anymore. And they're just, you know, I'm kind of done. I don't, I don't want to play anymore. But for the most part, like all these guys that you're like, oh, I don't have to worry about beating him anymore. Like now you've got to beat all of them. Um, it's now not a matter of like, like, okay, when I get a little bit older, I'll, you know, I'll just get better than them. Like, no, you, you got to outwork and, and beat all of them from a talent point of view. So I think I took that attitude once I, once I did turn pro, um, we were speaking about Ryan Ruffles before as well. Like Ryan was obviously the phenomenal junior player and, and he was given a lot of opportunities when he turned pro, obviously a, a bunch of invites on the PGA tour and, and whatnot. And coming through, like at the same time, I felt like we were pretty competitive against each other in amateur stuff. There wasn't a lot of stuff that I felt like I got beaten in yet. He was getting all the opportunities. So I felt like I wanted to work really hard to earn all the opportunities that he was getting off my own play um, and not have to really worry about, you know, playing the politics game and, and trying to be friends with tournament organizers or, or whatnot. And I want to say for the most part, I, I haven't, I've, I've pretty much earned everything I've done in my career. I haven't had a lot of sponsor invites um, to be able to, to get to where I am. I, I've generally played quite well. I've gone to, I've gone to Monday qualifiers when I've had to um, gone to 36 hole Monday qualifiers for, for majors and everything like that. And, and kind of done it more the hard way. Um and yeah, I, I, you know, I feel pretty satisfied getting to where I am now too, having done it that way rather than, I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound like Ryan was gifted anything. He's an unbelievable player and he obviously just got some great opportunities and it, it's not his fault he got them. But um, from a comparison, I, I, you know, I felt like I really went out and, and let my clubs do the talking. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you've earned, you've earned everything. It was two wins on the European tour, one on the PGA tour, but as an Australian growing up, was the dream to play European tour or was always the dream to, to make it on the PGA tour? No. So I loved, I always loved America. Like we would come over for the amateur trips um, as amateurs, uh, like 2013, 2014. I remember doing some trips around there and like, I'm, I know like I've listened to the show a bunch. I know you guys played like Porter cups and mm -hmm. Western amateurs and us amateurs and stuff like, and it was just so much fun. Like you, you know, it was pretty much a holiday. You get to go play golf. You get to travel and see new parts of the world. You were put up with like host families that you didn't realize were like unbelievable to you um, at the time. So I always loved playing in America and I always wanted to play. I, I, I never really wanted to go through Europe. And then I was playing. I'd had a really nice finish to the 2017 season, which had gotten me some starts. I, I'd finished like seventh on the order of merit in Australia, which, got me some starts on the European tour with the co-sanctioning events. And we just, we were going to go, we went to China, uh, PJ tour, China Q school and the um, Canadian tour Q schools. And I'm not the biggest fan of China. <laughs> and that's probably the nice way to put it. So I was sitting in a hotel room in China at Q school. And I was like, how do I not come back here again? And I just looked through and I'd, I'd been to, I went to the Singapore Open and finished eighth, which got me into the Open. And I had like, ironically, had a start in like the China Open and I had uh, like some Aussie tour starts that were co-sanctioned with Europe. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to have a go at Europe. So yeah, off the back of that, call my manager. And I was like, hey, can you try and get me like whatever starts you can get me in Europe? Like, I don't, I don't care what events they are. I'll just go play the biggest, like the worst events, the, the ones that no one wants to travel to anything. I'll go play anything in Europe just to try and get a start and play out there just so that I don't have to go to China. Um, <laughs> and that was, how, that was how the Europe journey sort of started. That's just so I don't have to go to China. Just Perfect. anything to keep me out of here. Well, dude, you've played all over the world. I mean, you've been in Australia, you've been in Europe, you've been in Asia, you're in the States. Where's the most fun place that you like to go? Like when you, when you showed up there, you're like, oh, I love it here. What's the best spot in the world in your opinion? My two, I think that the two that I love the most that are probably tied is like Prague and the Czech Republic. I think that's a really cool city, like on the river. I don't know whether you guys have been there. Mm -hmm. Really cool city on the river, like really old as well. Um, it's sort of like an old town vibe where they're like, they'll shut the streets off where you can't drive through and all the restaurants just kind of spill out onto the streets. Like it's amazing. 
uh, and Queenstown in New Zealand. Um, kind of similar to like if you go up to like the Banff area in Canada, very similar to like that kind of feel. Like it's well, obviously we play there in summer, but through the winter it's like all the ski slopes and and whatnot. So like the New Zealand Open every year is in Queenstown, and every year I can play it, I do, and we just get a house with like my family and a bunch of friends come over and like probably the best burger place in the world is in Queenstown as well. So it's like every night we're on the phone to them ordering like 15 burgers and, you know, we're just hanging out of the house, usually get some sort of hot tub in there as well. And just it's just a fun week. Um, so yeah, they're probably my two favorite spots to go play. Let's talk a little bit about, say, say you happen to miss a cut on the European tour. Who are some of the guys you're calling up to go have a night and get amongst it? Hmm. <laughs> um, on the European tour, who we got? Well, Scott Hens usually he's usually mm. dangerous, but good fun. Um, who else we got over there? Because I'm a veteran. I, Hen knows where I mean, he, any, goes. Yeah. Any, he knows. Any of the Aussie boys are usually pretty good fun. Um, I like I like the caddies as well. The caddies usually know how to get amongst them the best. Yes. Um, I feel like the players just don't quite have the experience that the caddies do. So. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty easily sidetracked by any of the caddies. I could be too outside the cut on Friday, and my phone would start blowing up. Where are we going tonight? Hey, <laughs> like, hey asshole, I might make a couple tweets. Jesus, I can shoot 33 on the yeah. back. It's happened before. Uh, Who are your boys on the PJ isn't it the, tour? Isn't it the worst when, like... Oh, go ahead. Isn't it worst... Oh, sorry, Cole. Like, isn't it the worst when, like, you shoot, like, five over in the first round? You're, like, plan. You're already planning your Friday night. Like, 100%. all right, what are we going to do? And then you're, like, four... You're like four under through nine on Friday, and you're like, what am I doing? I'm ruining my weekend plans here. <laughs> I had such great plans, yeah. and now I'm going to have Thursday to end up playing night, golf again. You start scrolling. Who else is going to be the loser on Friday night with me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who are your boys on the PGA Tour? Oh, you're trying tour? to talk your playing partners to it. Mm-hmm. Like, who do you like to run uh, too, around I'm with? I'm too new out here. I'm too new out here to sort of um, – I mean, we were, I, we were just hanging out with the rookies earlier in the year, so, like, Curtis Thompson was – at the rookie induction, like, Curtis Thompson was good fun. Taylor Penrith was good fun. Um, Paul Barjon, I think that's how you say yeah, his name. Yeah. Good fun. Um, now I'm out of that rookie category. I feel like I'm a bit more separated. I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, again, any of the Aussie boys are pretty good fun. You can't really go too wrong with them. Leash has got his own beer company, so like that's always a great start. Good Leash, friend. Leash is the man. Good Love that man. Have. What is yeah. what is an event? Obviously, other than the majors, you you've played all the majors except Augusta, which we're going to get to Augusta in a little bit. But what's an event on the PGA Tour you're really looking forward to? I have a feeling you might be saying where we live right now. Oh yeah, you're gonna fit <laughs> in Scott like a glove. Yeah, that, that's definitely one. I uh, yeah, I'm I'm interested in that one for sure. Uh, I lo- I played Memorial this year and loved it. Mm. I thought Memorial was an unbelievable event, so I'm really looking forward to playing that again. Um, where I mean, starting the year in Hawaii, like how could you? How could that be a bad week? Um, I don't care how windy it gets. That'll that'll be good fun. I don't know. I'm just like we've just done the schedule for next year, and we're all just looking at each other like, is this a joke? Like, all there's like events that you've looked up to as a kid. That you're like, oh, that'd be cool to play one day. We're like, nah, sorry, we can't play that this year. It's not going to fit into the schedule. That's going to be our third week in a row. So we're not doing that. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty biz- it's pretty bizarre how quick it's turned around. But um, definitely Memorial. Obviously, August is an easy pick there as well. Um, Will this be your first players? I'm not. A, yeah, players as well. I've never, I've never even played the golf course, so that's going to be unbelievable too. Good year to qualify. Purse is twenty million dollars. This is a twenty <laughs> mil this year, <laughs> Lucas. If you can get up for that, dude. This twenty. Not a bad year. Not a bad year to get in that. If you, if you like money, it's a good year to get into it. Have you set up any practice round trips for Augusta yet? And how many do you plan on taking? I uh, haven't as yet, but it's actually, it's kind of been crossing my mind a little bit the last few days. I'm like, should I get up there a little early? Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't done too much on that side, but I, I think you got to get up. I think you're going to have to get up there, right? I, I think if you turn up even like Saturday or Sunday prior, I know the women's event's going to be on there usually the week before as well. So you probably, I, I'm not sure, but like, I feel like I want to get the whole, oh my God, this is Augusta thing out of the way early on before there's, hospitality tents or anything like that up I'm, I'm not sure what they even i don't even know they have hospitality tents there but like i kind of want to get that whole that's going to be really really cool and i want to kind of soak everything in when i do go there for the first time and i, and I don't want to have to worry too much about like hey do we got to play a tournament as well so yeah i'll kind of i do want to get a trip in 
you know, maybe a month earlier and, and um, just to be able to do that. And then obviously, yeah, to get a good look at the golf course and um, see what suits me, see what doesn't. Uh, you can listen to as many people's theories on, you know, what you need to um, do well there to play well. But I think once you go through there and, and figure it out a little bit yourself, um, you hit the shots, you see what you're comfortable with, you see what you're not comfortable with. I think that's going to be um, the biggest key for me. Yeah, I think you should go there as soon as you can. As soon as they start saying, "Hey, Lucas, you're you're allowed to come, come, come." As many times, yeah. I think you should hold a qualifier too for who. Don't you get to bring one person with you? You get to bring one guest. I hope so. Thank you. Oh, Is maybe yeah. I might have to play that off amongst play that among off amongst the buddies. Like, all right, boys, who wants to? Uh, who wants to do this one? Uh, let me ask you this: since we're talking about Augusta, do you remember where you were when Adam Scott won the 2013 Masters? Yes. It's actually is a funny story. We played, um, I played a practice round with Scotty at Wingfoot last year. Uh, we were playing with Ryan Fox as well from New Zealand, and um, we were talking because Jeff had won. Jeff Ogilvy had won the U.S. Mm-hmm. Open at, at Wingfoot in '06, and, and Scotty was kind of talking to us about, uh, you know, oh yeah, I was I was on the plane and I, and I got off the plane to come celebrate with Jeff, and it was like one of those kind of moments where you remember where you were, and we were like, dude, do you realize like basically every Australian knows where they were when you won the masters. And he's like, kind of like, Oh really? And I was like, yeah, like we were at a, we we're at a junior interstate series in Perth, you know? And it was like, everyone was supposed to tee off at like a certain time. And everyone's just like hanging around the clubhouse trying to watch this playoff. We've all got it on like on the, uh, the masters radio on the range, trying to listen to it. Like I remember the masters because Scotty holds that part on 18. And we think that's like, Oh, he's might he might win with that. And then, Five seconds later, Angel Cabrera hits it to like, yeah, and it's okay. We're into a playoff now. Um, I remember that was on the range, and then, uh, yeah, it was like a match play thing. So it was like I was, I think I was playing number one, so I was the last off. And I remember just being on the putting green, listening to, uh, listening to the radio. I was just, it was only me on the putting green. I was kind of just like, and the, you know, the, the announcers are going through it, like, okay, he's lining this up, like he's getting over the ball. And then I hear just a massive roar from the clubhouse. I'm like, no, he's hold it. Oh, wow. So it kind of almost like ruined the moment a little bit, but I was like, this is really cool. So yeah, it was, and like um, in the practice round, like Foxy said the same thing. He was like, yep, we were at a house somewhere in Queensland, like supposed to go to the airport. All of us missed our flight because we stayed behind to watch the playoff. Like literally, I think any, anyone who's involved in golf in Australia could tell you exactly where they were when Scotty won that. Uh, that green jacket in 2013. That's, was he? Is was he the, like for you? Was he the guy? Was Adam Scott your guy? You looked up to growing up? Yeah, I think so. I mean, him and Stuart Appleby. Um, mm. Apples had like a junior event series that um, ran in, in Victoria, which is where I grew up. That's where he's from as well. So like, we were always playing like Stuart Appleby junior golf tournaments as well. So that was he was kind of the man. As well. And I know he didn't win a major, but like he played last group at Augusta, I think in 07. Um, and yeah, like he was a big presence in the junior days as well. And then um, Aaron Badley as well. Yeah. Bad's, I mean, Bad's played last group at uh, Oakmont, I think, in like 05 yeah, with man. Tiger. And then what a memory. When Tiger came um, out with the mock looking just jacked. Yeah. 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 And like Bad's also had some junior events as well. So like they were the guys that we looked up to a lot just because yeah, they helped out junior golf a lot too. So um, yeah, I'm going to say a combo of like those three boys were, were who we idolized. Um, but it was, I mean, everyone idolized Tiger too. Yeah. It's that, such a cool story. I've heard the you Ogilvy from. story when he won that open, like Adam Scott was on his plane, engines fired up, all that stuff. Found out Jeff had a chance to win, got off, came back and Ogilvy was staying at like a holiday Inn express. He's like, it was a nothing hotel out in the middle of nowhere. It was only golfers and fans. And then Adam came in, they celebrated in the lobby of that hotel and fans were walking in like, Holy shit. That's Ogilvy <laughs> and Scott right there. So holiday. is that weird for you thinking though that like now, I mean, there's kids in Australia right now that just saw you win on the PGA Tour and now like you're becoming one of those guys. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool to think about it when you when you put it like that. I mean, I, I don't feel like that's why I play the game. Um, but, I, you know, it, I'm going back to Australia at the end of the year and um, Jeff Jeff's just started another event called the Sandbelt classic sandbelt invitation i'm not sure um the exact wording on it but it's like a sort of four rounds in melbourne it's it's you know it's a super chill event it's not you know it's not a massive tour event or anything like that but i feel like if i go back and i'm going to play if i go back and play that and there is kids that kind of say that that's going to be really cool um i don't know maybe there is no kids that that say that and no one even knows who i am but um 
yeah, to like, I, I don't know, to, to be idolized by kids is pretty cool. And like, I guess I don't try and take that too lightly either. I want to set a pretty good example and, and be a bit of a role model to them um, on the golf course anyway. I mean, um, yeah, if you can have an influence in someone, someone's life, that's always pretty special. Yeah, you're yeah. the next wave. You're off to a hell of a start, no doubt about it. How, how much is the President's Cup on your mind? Oh, dude, like, I put so much pressure on myself to make that one in 19 because it was going to be like an, in Melbourne, a course I played a million times. I was like, I wanted to make that team so bad. And I like, honestly, I played horrendous for eight months prior to it because I put so much pressure on myself um, to get in that team. So, yeah, I, like I want to play one at some point. I want to I want to get rid of this trend of Americans just absolutely smashing it. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> It's uh, it's definitely on my mind. Although, like, dude, it, it's so strong. Like, I looked at the rankings the other day. Like, I'm not even in the top 15, and I've won. <laughs> um, there's just there's a bunch of guys that are playing good golf that are like international players, and yeah, it's it, it's really hard because I feel like yeah, we've got a great team looking like for the end of this year, or for the end of um, 2022, whenever the Presidents Cup is. But it's also like you look at the American team, and it's like that's just also ridiculously strong. And playing Quail Hollow, I think that's like that sets up for American uh, at the American team really well as well. So, look, I'd like I'd love to be on that team. Uh, I would love to give everything I could to win some points for us and try and buck the trend. But like, it's going to be hard. Trevor Immelman can be bribed, so yeah, just send him say, some nice yeah, shit. The, the Jeff, we could do some, you know, do some favors. There's some favors to be had. See what we can do. Trev's a great, yeah, Trev's a great guy. He actually helped me out. Um, he was like in the broadcast booth behind the chipping green at Wingfoot. And I was like chipping back there. And I was like, Trev, like, how do I get out of this rough? And he like stood there for 10 minutes over the balcony, just being like, here, play this club, like do this. Like help me out a bunch with technique. I'm like, what a guy. That's awesome. Yeah, he's a good guy to listen to. And I, you've been on a world, I want to get to Bermuda a little bit because you're just coming off of this win, but you played Maya Koba, I know just recently. Have you had time for like a proper celebration yet and to let this whole thing sink in? Like, holy shit, I'm a winner on the PGA Tour. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say the hangover that I had Monday morning in Mayakoba was the reason why I haven't had a proper celebration because it still hurts. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'll probably give it a nudge when we get back to Australia at the end of the year and really get amongst it. But it's, yeah, it's been tricky. I, like you're trying to play straight away the next week. So you, you definitely definitely still excited but you're trying to like subdue it a little bit just so you get just so you get a chance and like even we're playing next week in dubai you know i, I really want to play well at that event um there's a lot of incentives for for winning next week so i'm trying to put everything into that but i think once yeah once that's done and i'm, I'm sort of done for the season like i uh, i can't see a lot of my willpower stopping me from getting right amongst it <laughs> i love it what's your what's your go-to cocktail or drink or beer um, so Australia, Australia's going to hate me for this, but I'll literally drink anything other than beer. Yeah. For some reason, like beer just never sat well with me. So like, yeah. And that was probably the issue after we won in Bermuda as well as I probably drank everything except beer. Um, and the two tequila shots on the plane that I took, um, that was the reason why I don't really remember too much of like landing in Mexico and getting to the hotel, but, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do anything. I'll I do love anything. it. I love it. I've read that when you won your first, I think it was after you won in Dubai, you said you had a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue that you'd been saving until you won a big event. So I, are you doing any, I'm assuming that you drank that from what it, from what it sounds like, but did you do have any big reward after you win this? Are you gonna, I know you're a car guy, guitar guy, any, any sort of reward for this one? Um, not for this one, actually. I Yeah, the first one we won in Dubai. So I'd, that was basically like the first thing I'd ever won as a pro. Um, I maybe won, I think I won like first stage of Q school in Australia, um, but there's like no money in it. So I was like, that doesn't really count. And so my 21st birthday, uh, I had a bunch of friends that kind of all chipped in for a present. And it was like, they got me a bottle of Johnny Walker blue and they sort of left a note with it. Like when you win your first big tournament, you can open this and drink it. So like once I, once I won Dubai, it was like, right, now's the time so it was like there was a group chat from the party and it's like i think it was three years gone since um since the party and it was like 
hey guys, who wants to drink some Johnny Walker? So with this Johnny Walker bottle, when I'm like a tour around my hometown of like, I just go and take it, go and take a little uh, little nip with like every single person that chipped in for it. So that was really cool. Um, the, the, the win at the Irish Open, that was our second week on the road. And before we left, I was like, boys, I want to make enough money to buy another GTR here in America and like pretty much knock that off second week in the trip. So had that planned out. So this, um, this win in Bermuda, I didn't have, I didn't have anything um, that I really wanted to do. So uh, I'm sure I won't have an issue spending some cash, <laughs> no. but yeah, I didn't have any, I didn't have anything picked out that I was like, yeah, this is what I want to, want to spend some money just, on. Just go find the barn rat, ask That's him for some advice say, how to you're spend in money. Orlando, I got, we got a good financial manager named Kiridak, and he's right <laughs> down the road. We're going to plug you into him. It's either car shoes or watches. How many Ferraris? How many Ferraris would we put deposits on if we let Kiridak take care of that? Oh. Do you see him cruising around in Orlando very often and just different whips every single time? No, he's out at Lake Nona, so I don't see much of the barn rat. Um, which is sad because he is one of the greatest human beings. We're managed by the same manager. So, I mean, I hear enough stories from him and um, yeah, he's just, we play it. We played a fair bit when I was kind of coming up um, through the Asian tour and the European tour. We played a, we played a fair bit out there. So yeah, I've seen, a, I've seen a lot of Kiridak. Um, he is, yeah, he's, he's, he's just one of the greatest characters. There's no you doubt. Guys, you guys would know. One of the, one of the yes. absolute best. You mentioned you're going to Dubai here in a couple of weeks. I need you to let me know if they're still talking about my sand surfing skills when you get there. Cause I mean, it was the buzz of the whole place. I did say that. Whew. I did say, I, what'd you I think about that? You had to buy was, what'd you think about that little clinic? Um, my guy put on, on the board. They're calling mm. him the flying potato over here. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of sponsorship inquiries. I'm handling all of them. When I'm still debating right now, but impressive. Are you still fun? Are you still finding sand in all sorts of places? And no. you're like, oh, I didn't nope. know that was still there. No bullshit. I got home and I put my shoes on the washer and I took the soles out and sand was on top of the washer and dryer. I was like, that was like six days it's ago. It's going to be March, <laughs> yeah. bro. And you're going to like wiggle out your ear. Yeah. Like, oh shit, yeah. there's some Dubai. I started just laughing. I was like, oh, there's oh. the Arabian desert on the washing machine. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, so much fun doing that stuff, though. Yeah, it's a good city. No what doubt about it. What did you do with the Dubai Trophy? Which is that the biggest, tro- the biggest trophy, like from a weight or height perspective? I think in golf, what do they do? You get that? Do they send you one, or is that just like, hey, put your name on it and it stays here? Um, yeah. So we got. I, I had that for like ten minutes. So they obviously stand next to the trophy and they're like presenting it to you, and then they go like pick it up for for the photos. I swear to God, I picked this thing up and I was like, guys, you've got five seconds to get these photos or else I'm done. Yeah. Like, this is so heavy. Yeah. So, yeah, I had it for that. And then someone carried it out to the 18th green for photos. And then I want to say I didn't see it again until the tournament the next year. Like, and it was actually kind of sad. Um, I felt like I got a replica trophy sent home. So I got that, but I actually wanted, I kind of wanted some time with the trophy. So that was the two wins I had this year. That was the, that was the, that was the takeaway that I took from my first win was like, don't let go of that trophy. So like, if you look back at the Irish open stuff, like they give me the trophy on the 18th green. And like, that thing doesn't leave my hands for about an hour. And then it was the same thing in Bermuda. Like I carried that thing around everywhere. It was like this triangle. So it's like hanging around that arm, just walking around <laughs> everywhere. I was like, no, you guys can have this back in like an hour, but like I, I got some stuff to do with it. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. I'd be a good one to drink out of. That Dubai, when you get the whole city of Dubai messed up out of if that, if that thing is drinkable. I was always, because oh. that thing is massive. I was always wondering, like, do these guys get one of those? You need a big ass house just to house that thing. I want to ask you quickly about your caddy, who I think the world is just getting to know as well. Nick Pugh, I mean, this dude is a beauty. He looks like skinny Santa Claus out there. Give us some scoop on, on, on your boy here. What's he looks like? His Instagram says, I do outdoor maths and carry heavy shit around the golf course. So I already know I like this guy. Yeah, he's one of the best, Nick Pugh. Um, magnificently bearded, obviously, um, mm-hmm. which has gotten grayer and grayer as we've worked together. If you go back and look at like early photos of us, there's like a lot of like darker, browner, black hair in there. It's just, it's completely white now. Um, I've just aged him. Uh, yeah, absolute legend. Um, he's like the most obsessive cleaner of anything in the world. So like... I can't get it. Like I can clean, I can clean a club and I'll put it back in the bag and he'll take it back out and like scrub it with a brush and then clean it himself. till it gets to his level and like gets all the dirt out of the numbers and then puts it back in the bag. Like it's, it's hilarious. I mean, we've like, we would play, 
we would play games on the golf course of me trying to get a dirty club back in the bag. And it's like, it's got to a point where I would hit a shot, like you'd hit like a nine iron and the divot would go miles down the fairway. So he's off chasing that. And I would like half clean the nine iron, put it back in the bag, get the, get the wedge out and like bury that in the turf and then put that on the side of the bag. So he thinks that's the club I've hit. Like we went to elaborate lengths to try and like get dirty clubs in the bag, but he just walks along and like, he's got his hands on the clubs. He's like, nah, there's a dirty one, pulls it out, like cleans that. So Sleaze, pretty OCD with like you don't do that. clean or. <laughs> That's a lot like what I did you, for Wyndham, but I the mean, opposite. I was like, Jesus, bro. How about clipping it a couple of times? Just clip it. You need all this dirt. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's shallow. Even like he's been, he's been living in my apartment most of the year. And like you go into his closet and there's just all the shirts are just arranged perfectly in like mm. color order. And it's just like, he's one of those guys. He's very OCD. Everything has to be um, in an order, which is like, it's perfect as a caddy. Like, I've I'm, I'm I've never stressed out about anything prior to around when he's on the bag because I like you know it's like oh is it raining Nick do you have an extra towel he's like you kidding me I've got four in the bag like perfect nothing ever gets past him he's always like you know he's he's super zoned in on that sort of stuff and he's yeah it, I'm I'm quite like everyone says they're a field player but I'm definitely on the field side of things I mean as soon as it gets windy. He's like, you've got 145. Like, how far are you going to play this? I'm like, dude, it's like an eight iron, and I'll just kind of chip it and feel it. You know, one of like, I, I hit a lot, lot of those kind of shots. Um, I don't really see start lines. Like, I'm just like, yeah, I'll just finish it on that tree. I don't really know where I'll start it, but I, you know, it'll end up there. Beautiful. Um, so it's kind of, it's a really good, like, it's a really good combo in that, like, he brings the the very structured side to the the relationship, and I'm just super chill, and he allows me to be quite artistic and, and, um, you know, just sort of fluid and, you know, whatever you want to call that side of things. Like it, it's a really good combination. So yeah, we've um, obviously had good success together and um, it should keep going. I think. I love this. Yes, both Pew. ends of the spectrum. All right. Well, you know what it's time for now. It's time to get to the emergency yes, nine. Let's go. And to be fair, we didn't have, we didn't get a ton of dirt on you. So it's going to be, yeah, it's not our typical research, we but dug, we're going to give it our best. We dug deep, dude. You, you're, you're clean right now. You come back in a year or two after you pick off that masters or something, we'll have some more. Stuff oh yeah. For you. Don't doubt about it. But all right. We asked this. I was everyone. thinking about it. I was like, I don't, I don't know that. I don't know that you guys would know anyone that would have dirt on me. So I was interested to see what you, what you got. I had, gotten. I had one guy, but he hadn't gotten back to me. He used to caddy for you a little bit. I believe his name's Johnny. Oh, Johnny Rawlings. What a yep. man. Legend. I love Johnny. I Rollins. thought you might have gone there. I tried. I remembered this morning, and I sent him a message, and I haven't heard back from him yet. I also got the phone number of one of your close friends. I have no idea what time zone he's in right now, so I sent him a text a little bit earlier. I was like, hey, "Dude, it could be three in the morning where this guy is right now." So I'm not going to give you his name because I'm going to go back to the well with this guy. But I was like, "The odds are slim on this one." All right. Well, let's get right to it. You know, number one, you can you can trade lives with anyone in the world, dead or alive, for a day. Who's it going to be? I've done I've I've done my homework on this one. I'm gonna say John Mayer. You talked about mm-hmm. before. I'm a, I'm a guitar guy. Yeah. The way that guy can like put down chords on a guitar and just what he can make a guitar sound like. I'm like I would love to do that for a day. Girls That'd be kinda, so cool. Girls kind of like. Yeah, him you too. have some good options depending <laughs> yeah. on which era of John era John Mayer you go with. You got Jessica Simpson. Uh, I mean that's yeah. Era. It's an added side effect others. too, but yeah. All right, that's mm. a smart answer. That's a good answer. I like uh, yeah, that. Yeah, that would be me. That's a smart answer. All right, first one for me. Which crocodile is more famous in Australia? Crocodile Dundee or the Crocodile Hunter? Crocodile Dundee, all oh, day. Yeah, I freaking Mick, know. what a legend. Yeah, dude. Have, how many times have people come up to you and have used the, the phrase, call that a knife? That's a knife. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's got to yeah, be the one. That's, that's pretty common. That's pretty common for any Australian over yeah. here. Um, that's me. Yeah, if you, that would have been, been a really tough, that would have been a really tough question to be had. It's um, Crocodile Dundee or Steve Irwin because he's a national treasure. Mm, so, yeah, true. true. Um, Crocodile Dundee. Yeah, what a Crocodile movie, Dundee. Though. What a man. Oh. I love that. All right, you got to tell me about this Vegemite. I've, I've asked so many people and I don't understand it. Are you a Vegemite guy? It's an Australian thing. I don't even know what the hell it is. I'm not. I feel like it's. I feel like it's to do with the beer. If you like beer, you like Vegemite. Um, and it's kind of our tactic to like scare Americans too. Cause like we only kind of eat it. Like we kind of lightly put it on with butter on, on toast. But then we come to America and we're like, oh, guys, you got to try this. And we lather it on and like, here you go, eat this. And it's like disgusting. And you guys act the way you should. 
but like none of us eat it. Is it like with it just well? I think it, I, is it like sure vegetable sick individuals that would eat yeah. it. Is it like vegetable, vegetable paste? Yeah, vegetable, it? Like it's like paste, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, it's. I don't even know. Do you have you ever have you ever tried marmite? That's probably like the closest thing to it. It's pretty similar, but no, it's it's really yeasty and it's just it's pretty trash. I was with Paul. Oh, I was with Paul bad. Gal last week and he was raving about Vegemite. Gowie. God, he's weird oh, though. Sounds Gowie. Terrible. What a man. Ugh. It's not an In and Out. It's probably. I don't shit. think they have it over here, Slees. Okay, good. I'm not. I'm not in the market. I'm not the their best. target demo for that. For stuff. the best. Anyways. All right. I know you're a big Aussie Rules football guy. So here we go. You get three picks of professional golfers to start your own team. Aussie mm-hmm. rules football. Who you want? All still playing or retired as well? No, you can go retired. Ugh, you I go don't... whoever you want. You go across okay. the board. It's gonna we'll go Peter Lonard retired. Oh yeah. Um. Sorry, so AFL players that I'm picking as golfers. No, no, no. Golfers, golfers, professional golfers, 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 to, golfers to play on your rugby golfers team. Golfers in a okay. Sorry. No, you're That's good. Not bad. Um, okay. You throw up Peter Lonard, that wouldn't be a bad shot. Uh, all right, we need we need guys who are quick. Um who we got? I think Sc- I think Scotty would be pretty good. He's too I think pretty. Scotty would be a pretty good, good player. He's he's not gonna take a hit. <laughs> Nothing above the shoulders, boys. Um, yeah, you couldn't ru- you couldn't ruin that hair. Mm-mm. Um who else we got? I feel like Stuart Appleby would just be in and under and just an absolute like bulldog, basically. You'd probably call it in America. He would he'd be a good player to have on your team. Um I would go like Gary Woodland. He's a, we have he's anyone? A I had Gary in mind, which sucks because yeah. I don't want to give him a compliment, but I feel like he's a pretty good athlete yeah. on the thicker side. At least early, you know, two years ago Gary was pretty thick. He slimmed up a bit. Yeah, I feel like you bring you Jason know, I feel Gore like, out. I feel I feel like Abraham Answer could be like really quick around mm. the packs, like a little whip it, you know, just like picking up a few, you know, like he wouldn't get involved in a lot of the action, but he, like ball spills out the back, like he'd be really good to kind of run onto one and like he you couldn't catch him. He'd be so quick. Yeah, like CT Pan. <laughs> Jesus. No. What about what about for a little like uh got to get in the scrum, scrum. Jason Kokrak. Nice. Oh, Kokrak will scrum it up. Oh, Kokrak, yeah. He'd be one of your first choices. Yeah. You bite somebody. Scrum, you like Country that? Country scrum. Yeah, you use scrum <laughs> right scrum. there. Scrum's the right word, I think. Yeah, just like, just get him really pissed off before he gets in the scrum. Like, he would run through anything, I reckon. Yeah. I think Abe, it yeah. Like a freight get him train. in the scrum and give the ball to Abe, and here we throw go. Throw it to CT, and then you just throw CT and then all you, the way. And then you score. I don't know what the hell it's called. Maybe score. <laughs> yeah, you get a... Maybe throw a cure to... Maybe throw Kiradek at the front of that pile. Of course. Too. I reckon he might, be, uh, he might be pretty good. Have him on in any position whatsoever. Have you adopted a like a NFL or college football team over here? I'm not a big football guy. I, I really can't get into it um, as much. I'm a, I'm a Blackhawks fan, which is really hard to admit at the moment. Mm. Um, yeah. Going through, some, going through some bad stuff at the moment. Um, what else do we got? How'd you get into hockey? That's so, interesting. Yeah. yeah, that seems strange. For some reason, hockey is like, uh, it's my favorite. It's probably my favorite American sport. I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm with I, you. I just, I, I think it's amazing how quick they are on skates and like how con- how much control they've got. Like, you know, I, I don't know what you guys like on skates, but like I go, I can skate a little bit, but it's like, if you've got a kid in front of you, you're like, oh my God, how am I going to avoid this? And like, they're going <laughs> backwards and just like, oh. It's un- it's unbelievable how good they are, and then they're controlling a puck and like, yeah, it's just I like I think they're phenomenal athletes. Yeah. Um, so much more like talent rather than like actual physical, like you know, just being really really strong. Um, that's probably that's probably the thing that I like the most watching hockey. Yeah, we are pretty amazing. <laughs> Jesus, once we, get, once we get on the ice, those hockey guys. All right, you next I mean? next one, ignore him. <laughs> All right, would you rather win two more PGA Tour events in twenty twenty two? Or play on the International Presidents Cup team. Hmm. Two. I mean, I feel like if I win two more events, yeah, I got pretty, no, nope. pretty good. You're just gonna fin- standings or getting a captain's nope. pick. Yeah, nope. Count, nope, that's not how it works. Pick one or the other. Nope, you have to pick one or the other. You're gonna finish second um, a bunch and play on the Presidents Cup team, or you're gonna win t- two more times. No, I want to play on that Presidents Cup team. I think that's, oh yeah, that's something that. I, uh, it's actually frustrating that 
I can't play a Ryder Cup because mm. they look like so much fun. But I want to turn the like I'd love the President's Cup to turn into like that kind of same rivalry and and at that same scale. And it's like it feels like it's getting there. So I think I'd really I would love to play that President's Cup team. We're gonna cut that clip right there and send it to Trevor Immelman. Yeah, you're gonna have that in his inbox tomorrow morning, <laughs> Trevor. If you're listening, listen to your boy, man. He wants on that squad. All right, next. I'll send question. it as well. I'll send it as well. Anything for Trev. We'll blast this out once a week until the President's Cup. All right, next one. Better looking Australian specimen. Margot Robbie. Not terrible. Or Margot Robbie. Adam Scott. Or Adam <laughs> Scott, dude. Adam I Scott. Need, I don't need to hear the second option. Margot Robbie. Adam Scott. Pretty good. She's, Depends on what your flavor is. You know what I mean? Uh, she's. I didn't really realize mm-hmm. she was Australian until not that long ago. She can be whatever she wants. She's. Wolf of Wall Street. It's not really fair because, like, Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. She she puts on that Brooklyn accent unbelievably. So, like, yeah, you don't even realize she's she's Australian. But yeah, she's yeah, she's phenomenal. She probably knows you right now, bud. She probably knows who Lucas Herbert is right now. Maybe we cash in on those that those chips right now while they're hot. Oh my god. Stop it, Steve. Stop it. (laughs) I love it. All right, you mentioned you're you're big into cars. You have a GTR, I know, but what is Lucas Herbert's dream car? think too much logically about this because like anything like a gdr so i can i drive that as like a daily like i can put my clubs in the in the trunk and you know get a friend in the passenger seat and drive to golf and it's so quick as soon as you go to like another level up from that now it's like practically not that smart because you don't have anywhere to put your clubs other than where your friend's sitting in the passenger seat so it's like now it becomes impractical so i don't know like that's what I, i think too logic about that um i mean you gotta go like i'd have to go with like some sort of like old school ferrari like an f40 or something like that i think like yeah something like that would be really cool but i, I don't know I, like golf's golf's really cool and that like we make a lot of money so we can kind of have the opportunity to like potentially buy our dream car one day and I just don't know that I would spend the money on a dream car because I'm like, what am I going to do with it? I'm telling Drive you. it to the supermarket to get groceries that don't put on the don't fit in the car. Like, I don't know. WWKD, what would Kyrdek do? That's what I'm saying, dude. Just I mean, wait till Kyrdek gets tired of some of his shits. <laughs> He's going to pass those things on. You scoop in there, auto trader. I need, I need Kyrdek on the international team with me, and we can uh, just ooh. discuss future movements about cars and shoes i don't know who i'll root for if y'all are both on it's that team kind of, dude, my <laughs> loyalty, i bleed red white and blue but shit it's gonna get tough yeah. if both y'all are on there <laughs> we might we might get even a in a uh, team international cap if me and kiridek are playing the balls and together mm-hmm. gold yeah dude, i mean to be team switzerland i've never seen Slee's man crush over more anyone more than kiridek so i love the rat dude i'm open about it i don't care i love him <laughs> Have you seen? Did you see the shirt that came out like two or three years ago? It was uh, like, always be yourself unless you can be Kira Dekka Baban Rat that's a, and be Kira Dekka Baban That's a good rat. mantra a great saying. for life. Yeah, we got a couple shirts with them on. I haven't worn that in a long time. No, we, we got, got one of his face, up. his whole body yeah, on his it. his whole body's on that little cartoon arm. Got to bring that out soon. Yeah. If y'all two are on that international squad, we're going to have to have a serious talk about allegiances <laughs> leading into that week. All right, here's my next one. I can only ask this to Australians, so I want you to think deeply about this but what's the longest amount of time you've ever been you've ever been able to spend in the bush ever spent a significant amount of time in this time of, i mean we did some, we did some school camps that were like <laughs> you'd spend a week in there oh probably. jesus that's a long time in there i'm more like a 10 minute um, guy max i'll take the under <laughs> you're an idiot yeah i don't know i'm a, like I don't know whether you know Bendigo too much, Steve, but like that's a yeah. it's a country town. I do. Uh, you know, we're pretty uh, obviously, but uh, you know, we we've not really. I would not say I'm a city sli- uh, city kid, city slicker at all. So yeah, we definitely. I mean, planning to go back in December, and first port of call was like, boys, we need to go on a little couple of day camping trip here. Just get away from get away from everything. Get the phone out of uh, out of service so that we can just hang in the bush and. Uh, not have to worry about everyone else's life for a couple of days. Yes. Get home, dive into that bush. I love it. All right. Last one. Last one. This one's going to get interesting. Are you at all upset that Patrick Reed stole your bunker technique and never gave you any credit for it? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> Interview over. Get him, Lucas. Get his ass, bro. <laughs> Sorry, I had Kill to. Him. Uh, Kill I him. Kill him. I was wondering. <laughs> come up. I'm so happy it did. <laughs> oh, oh shit. what can I? What can I say without getting in trouble for anything um, you want? Oh, I it had was to. not. Uh, it was not. Not my best. Not my best moment there. I'm. Uh, I hate the excuse of letting the camera made it look worse than it was. I should. I shouldn't have done any of what I did. But. Um, it, it just it felt like one of those things if you did it with your buddies you wouldn't even you wouldn't even realize but when i got showed back in on camera i'm like yeah it's that's not the best move i'll ever make so um yeah me and patrick you've got patrick your buddies out there we've got something in common. identity theft is not a joke patrick i mean i was a little it was, uh, i was a little nervous asking that when i was like scott, i was too i didn't know how that would go i don't know how to go over either <laughs> all right we're talking about scott hen before scott hen put like a little uh a little like Imagine you go to the beach with your kid and you got like a little bucket and shovel. Like he put one of those in my locker the next week. Beautiful. Like, hilarious. <laughs> That's great. I like that play. Oh, it's good. Lucas, Lucas. Man, this has been great. Thank you so much for joining us, dude. Congratulations on the win. Keep up the great play and we'll see you soon. Boys, thank you. I'm glad not as much dirt was dug up than, uh, as, uh, as I was hoping for. No, you're all good, my man. Really appreciate next it. Next time. We appreciate you. All right. Well, that was Lucas Herbert joining us on Golf Bar- Golf Sub Bar Sleeve. You know, I had that last question written down. I was going to kind of feel out the interview, see how it went. You know, I felt like it was going pretty good. So I just decided to throw it out there. And he was a great sport. You know, obviously, the rules incident of the day was in the bunker. Patrick Reed kind of stole his thunder a little bit. But, you know, I felt I had to go with it. I, I, would, I didn't know how that was going to go over, full disclosure. But about <laughs> halfway through the interview, I was like, I think this is going to be just fine. But he took it well. I mean, like I said before the interview, I like this dude. I like this guy a lot. Add him to the list of guys you want to have a beer with if you're on the PGA Tour. This guy seems to get it. Also, the first guy who ever has said that he would be Leonardo DiCaprio for a date, which I kind of thought would be like the new yeah. Denzel answer. Like everybody would want to be Leo. Uh, I thought he was the first guy to do it. I expect we'll have more of those. Also, I was amazed, Colt, at how long he spent in the bush. It's a long time yeah. to be in there, dude. That one went over the head a little bit. Now, that, one, that was a little longer than I expected. Man, a week at a time. Shit, you're a superhuman, Luke. Uh, I love it. Well, Lucas Herbert, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with out on the PGA Tour. And please, I mentioned I'm getting ready to head out to Augusta. Um, Gary Woodland is here at Kevin Kisner's event. Just texted me and said, have fun today at Augusta. And I said, I feel like something mean is coming <laughs> in this next text. He just said, if you want to see where I stay when I play the Masters every year, let me know and I'll send you the address. <laughs> he is such a dick oh what a guy what oh. a guy he's always looking out dude the oh, world could use more gary's you know more gary's. i totally disagree with you Just well the golf season that. is back in full swing and there's no better way to get in on the action than on FanDuel sportsbook each week we we love looking through all the different markets and finding fun and unique bets like finishing position matchups round leaders and group winners and don't worry if you missed out on getting your bets in before the tournament starts because FanDuel will have live betting options all throughout the weekend so you can always make every moment more. And if you win, please, they get it to you quickly. How long? How fast they get it to you? Just two hours. Just right around the corner. And what else? What else they got there over there at FanDuel? I know you uh, I'll tell you what they got, Colt. They got a grizz load of, of betting options. First of all, you got live betting. That's key for the degenerate to get in there on the action as soon as you see it. They got same game parlays, my new favorite betting option out there. They got player flops. They got whatever you want. Every so every day we got new odds boosts where you can bet a normal game. The odds get boosted. Bam, you can win a ton of money. And stay tuned for this week. We've got something special coming for you guys. The match with Bryson and Brooks. We're going to have a little action out there on that. So stay tuned for that. You can get it with uh, subpar. Yeah, you'll get. You'll have a chance to win our little our some speakers, maybe some gear, all kinds of things with that subpar boost on the match that's coming to you next week. But right now, FanDuel is letting you place your first bet risk-free up to $1,000. Just place a bet on any game or golfer, and FanDuel will refund you up to $1,000 back if you don't win your first bet. Seriously, there's no strings attached. Just place any bet you want. If you win, you keep the cash. If you lose, you get your entire bet up to $1,000 back in site credit. All right, we are on to the RSN Classic Sleeves. You know, we've been running pretty hot. I thought we were about to get another one. We, we put out Matthew Wolf there last week. He was in the last group on Sunday. A little bit of a struggle finish, tied for 11th, but we're on to the RSM Classic, Sea Island. My man Kevin Kisner, who's a vet I'm at, he's a past champion there. Webb Simpson is in the field. He absolutely loves the place. Who are we going with this week? You mentioned the guy I'm going with at the top. The guy at oh. the top is going to be up there, Mr. Weber Simpson. He's only got three starts this year. 
Uh, 14th, though, his last time out in Vegas, so playing some good golf. Long year for Weber with everything that he's had to play in. I think this has been his first time to catch his breath in a while. I think he's long, I wouldn't say overdue, but I would not be shocked at all to see Webb go down there and hoist a trophy uh, this week in Sea Island. Yeah, he loves that place. He loves that place. I'm going to go with a guy who lives there, who has also has found his game once again in the past couple of years, was a member of that Ryder Cup team that absolutely dominated. I'm going Harris English mm. as my favorite to win this week. Another guy who's won there twice. He's got two PJ Tour wins. They both happen to happen at the seaside course. There's the on Robert Strep. Saw him go really, really low out in Vegas. Um, this guy just something about this place brings out the best in him. Robert Streb, a little dark horse for you. Yes, he's a streaky player too. When he gets going, he gets going well. I'm gonna go with a guy. Uh, if you're talking about long shots here, no pun intended, I'm going Adam Long, okay? So his last mm. three starts on the PGA Tour, top 25s in his last three, 11th last week in Houston. Had a chance going into Sunday, uh, but only shot even. He dropped to 11th place, but still playing golf. And kind of like Robert Streb, dude, guy that can run streaky. See him play some very good golf and stretches. So I look for uh, another good week from Adam this week. Long shot. All right, I like it. Baby head. Little tiny baby head. If he can, if he can somehow activate all of that brain, he has a chance. All right. Well, if you've never tried FanDuel Sportsbook, what are you waiting for? Go to FanDuel.com slash subpar or download the FanDuel Sportsbook app to get started. Be sure to sign up with su promo code subpar so they know that we sent you. Must be 21 years and older and present in Arizona, Connecticut, or New Jersey. First online real money wager only. Refund issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org backslash chat or 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, please. I'm heading out to Augusta to get amongst it. You going over or under 76? Have a bit of a day. Try to enjoy yourself, dude. Don't get bogged down with work stresses. I'm going over just for the sake of the pot. I think you can <laughs> clip 76. Actually, 76 is probably right where I would have put you, but I'm giving you I'm giving you a $50 bet. Just keep it friendly on the over. I'll take over. You take under. Let's go. We'll settle up. We'll talk all about it next week. I can't wait. We'll break it all down for you on next week's Golf Safari. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you next week.